Hi there, and welcome back to Mo's Garage, or is that Kathy's Kitchen? Yep, uh, Mo's Garage today will be out of Kathy's Kitchen because it is too freaking hot in Mo's Garage to do much of anything. So ignore all the cooking sounds in the background. Kathy's actually preparing for some guests tonight. What we have here is we have a compass out of our um, little Remos GX um, light sport aircraft. Basically, uh, when I bought the aircraft, I found out on our first flight that there's no fluid inside the compass itself. Um, and the um, good news is these compasses are able to be rebuilt. There's a handy dandy rebuild kit that you can actually get from Aircraft Spruce. That also includes actually um, getting some um, glycol, whatever that fluid is, to fill the compass up with. So I guess this must be a regular occurrence these things uh, happen. So um, I guess you, there's some gaskets. Take it apart, um, put new gaskets in, fill it up with fluid, put it back together, and voila, good as new. Um, you do have to swing the compass again, which is basically getting um, all the errors out. Uh, well, not getting the errors out, but identify the errors in the compass due to uh, basically um, deviation called, caused by um, metallic objects inside the aircraft. So, but we, so we won't get into that. Um, it suffices to know that the little uh, airplane that we have is actually considered experimental. So uh, as experimental, I'm actually um, able to do the work on the, these kind of things myself. Um, otherwise, most likely we'd have to actually take it to a shop. So anyhow, um, good news is uh, there's actually a set of instructions that come with it. And so we'll go ahead and follow it and see how it works. Awesome. Okay, so step first is to start disassembling the compass. So um, the first things first, we have these four screws in the back here. So we'll take these out. Um, and there's actually a diaphragm here, which we have a spare, spare gasket for. This is basically what was inside the kit. Um, rubber gasket, cork gasket, a new uh, little card for uh, night cook, um, writing down the deviation. Um, and so this is the new diaphragm in the back. So first things first, we'll take these little screws off. Okay, so you have the screws off. Um, we're gonna pry it in here a little bit to kind of, oh, there it goes. So we'll pull this out. So here's the back plate, and here is that um, diaphragm. So you can, it's kind of wet on the outside, so it looks like that's been kind of where it leaked. So then we'll just kind of pry it up, see what we have. And voila. And I'm not sure if that's a little bit, so not if that's supposed to be there. Let's see. No, it looks like that, that's supposed to be there, so that's okay. Okay, and what we'll want to do before we pour liquid all over the kitchen table is find something to dump the liquid into it real quick. Okay, let me go look for something real quick. Okay, final little container. We're going to go ahead and just pour the liquid out of it real quick. There's still some, it's a little, a little yucky, a little dirty, but um, anywho, we will not be reusing that. So I have a nice clean rag over here, which you can kind of put this on. Because the next step is to uh, remove the front of the compass to replace these two caps. We need to remove these, I believe it's most likely these four screws here. I would imagine that this. These screws in here might be something to do with swinging the compass, although I say that, and it looks like you have to remove those screws regardless because they're overlapping these screws. So, okay, well, we'll sounds like another uh, screw removal time. Okay, the one thing to talk about here is that we have to be very careful that the compass glass has a beveled edge and we need to figure out exactly where the beveled edge, if we don't put it back, it could crack is what it's saying. So as we take this off, 
And it sure looks like that gasket did not belong to this particular, um, or either that or somebody did a bad job installing it, so I'm not sure what's up with that. I mean, it's, um, that's the old gasket. You can see the new gasket. So it definitely looks a lot different. So I'm not sure what was somebody, that was just a bad job by somebody or what the deal is. And then they talk about a beveled edge on the glass. So anyhow, so we'll, we'll so this is the, Hmm. Okay, so that's, that's the bottom of the bevel and the top is not. So we'll, we'll just keep this like this. We know that's the top. So, and then that's basically that's what's inside. Nothing too exciting. Um, there should be a gasket somewhere though. And it appears the gasket is right. Carefully peel that back. Okay, so there is the old gasket. So good news, it's not really in horrible shape. Uh, I said the cork gasket was definitely not good. I'm not sure what the heck happened there. At some point in the airplane's life, I'm assuming something weird happened. Uh, we will clean this up real quick um, and then start with the reassembly. Good deal. Awesome. Okay, so everything is pretty well cleaned up. So time to reassemble. So we start off by putting the new rubber gasket in. It goes there. We have our glass the same way it came out. It goes, goes back in too. So that's on there. And then we have this other gasket that goes on top here and this goes on top of that and the good news is this gasket looks more a little bit more like it should should have been previously as in it fits <laughs> so and then now we have all this plethora of little screws that we need to get back in so time to have some fun putting some screws in Okay, that's the front of it done. So for the next fun part, they recommend you find a place where you can basically um, put this under water or basically under this. So we'll see if we can find something that's big enough so we can completely immerse it. So, okay, so I finally opted for using a Ziploc bag uh, to try and figure out how to get enough um, fluid over the top of the compass in order to um, put the top back on. So no matter, I tried various different things, adding stuff inside my cup to try to get rid of, uh, try to get rid of some of the extra volume, no luck on that. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna put a zip tie around the bottom of this bag to kind of squeeze any liquid at the bottom where it kind of bulbs out. So we get as much maximum volume as we can out of our friend here. So it turns out that trying to put a cover on inside a coffee mug with a baggie full of liquid is not exactly the easiest thing to do, um, especially when the holes are barely lining up. So, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this neat little tweezer 
that I got from when I repaired an iPhone and see if somehow we can get it all to work while my beautiful assistant holds the light and then, well, yeah, yeah no, no, we'll, we'll get one in here first. Okay. Let's see how that works. Okay, so it's time to cut the straps and see what we have in here. I strongly suggest clearing it with your wife ahead of time if you're going to use kitchenware to do garage work with. Luckily, I think this um, compass, this fluid is just glycerin. So I don't think it's anything super toxic, but still. Okay, so that's that. See what we have. Voila. Okay, so it looks like so we unfortunately ended up, and did end up with a little bubble in there. I don't think it's into the world. Um, so it is a little unfortunate, but oh well. Um, quite frankly, there's just not enough liquid supplied with, um, with this whole thing to actually do a good job. Um, I, uh, so some guy online had the same exact issue and he decided to try to uh, fill it up through the front of the compost. I'm not sure how successful that was. But I think for the, for the most part that, that, that bubble should not be an issue on most points of, um, you know, I mean, you'd almost have to be going literally straight up. So I think, I think it'll be okay. So especially in the, I know this is going to be somewhat heresy, but in this day of GPS, um, you know, the compass is a good tool to have, but uh, also, um, you know, we have so many backups between phones and tablets and handheld radios. It's pretty crazy. Okay. Well, that concludes uh, this particular episode. Hope you enjoyed it as much as I did, which is, um, let's hope you enjoyed it. Let me, Let's hope you enjoyed it more than what I did. So uh, we will catch you on the next one. If you like this video, hit subscribe and give us a big like down below. Thanks for watching.